Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Phil with Behringer. How you doing today? We're here on a live chat session. Welcome everybody in. We're going to talk about some X-Air products, the X-Air family. So it's going to be more of an overview talk, more than a super specific thing. But, you know, if you get on the chat, you have some questions, go ahead and dial those in. Or, like I said, it's more of an overview today. And so make the questions easy. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever you want to know, we'll talk about it. So we're going to talk just about the family. Let's jump on in. So what we have here are the X-Air products from Behringer. Now these are some of the coolest products you're going to see. And the reason why is that they're so simple to use, so effective, and they sound great. Now there are four different types of these, and essentially what they are is they are the boxes, they are the brains, right? And then you can control them with your iPad, or your Android, even your iPhone with the Xair app that's available on iTunes at the App Store, okay? Or through your uh, PC Droid Store, something like that, right? So what's nice about it is that up to five users can use one device at the same time. And you'll kind of get, for those of you that are new to this uh, unit, you'll kind of get it in a couple of seconds when I kind of explain it through. Those of you that are already are users, it's kind of some extra tidbits. So for instance, the boxes are pretty much set up where the top row of connectors are inputs and the bottom row of connectors are outputs, okay? And then you have your auxes, okay? So with the outputs, you can send those to one or two ways, depending on which unit you have, to powered wedges or to be able to go to an in-ear system. Okay, so what's fun about having getting back to the five users is that each person, up to you know five people in the band, can control their own monitor mix. Okay, or front of house if the you know if somebody in the band is controlling front of house as well as what's happening on stage, it just makes it super flexible because you know the feeling on stage. Somebody's like, I can't hear me, you know. So now they can take their iPad and they will be able to hear themselves now because they can dial in their own monitor mix. How cool is that? Right? So let's talk about the different kinds of the X-Air products. So the first one I want to talk about is just the X-Air. Okay? Now this is a really cool unit and it's absolutely, you can see it's different than the others and the fact that I can actually stick a traveling device in here. I can put my Droid in there, I can put my iPad in there, all kinds of things like that and control it from here. Now, what's nice is that there are 16 XLR inputs on the top with the Midas Design mic pre, so they're going to sound amazing, right? And then on the back panel, you have six uh, quarter-inch outs for your aux outs. You also have the capability that I'll show you on some of these. On the back of panel is also you have an Ethernet port and three different ways to connect to this, which I'll talk about in a second. MIDI ports, a USB port, and an alternate port are all on the back of this, on the back panel. So. The reason why there's four different models is obviously different applications. So the application for this one would be, let's just say you're in a venue or you're a club owner or a venue owner, and you already have copper wire running from the stage out to front of house position where you had maybe another mixer, and now it's time to upgrade. And you don't want to tear all, all that copper out of the wall, and you kind of want to have a more controlled setup. So you can actually plug that snake that goes from the stage into the top of the X-Air and have the freedom to either mix here or be able to go ahead and take the iPad and mix while walking around the room. Or if you're the venue owner and you're not interested in mixing, you can have it and turn everything on and hand it over to the band and then they can mix themselves if they have a sound man or have somebody from the band mix front of house from the stage, which is pretty typical in small installations. So the Xair, all of these have the same cool mic pre's, okay? So there's no difference in quality between the models, just a difference in what, how many inputs you have, basically. So all the mic pre's on all of them are the Midas Design mic pre's, right? And all of the effects are the same effects out of the X32. There's just four stereo effects instead of eight stereo effects. So all these cool features are identical. So while you go, well, I just need this one, is it gonna be less quality? No. It's identical to the rest of them, okay? So this one, the reason for this one is so that you can put the tablet in it and have a front of house mix position or a stage left, stage right position and be able to rest an iPad down there, have somebody that sits there, looks at the stage and says, yeah, I'm going to mix from here, but I want to roam around during the show and be able to mix at will and go, what does it sound like over here in this side of the club and things like that. So this is a handy way to be able to do that. The next one that I want to talk about is the XR12. Now this one, as you can see, has less inputs. On the XR18, it was 16 XLR inputs and six quarter inch outputs coming out, and then two master outputs on XLR. Now, 
On this one, you can see there's nothing on the back panel of any of these, okay? So from now on, we're only just talking about the front panel. And what's handy is you have four XLRs and two quarter inch jacks on the top row, and then six quarter inch jacks on the bottom row for 12 inputs. Now, the reason these are handy is that on these inputs, like I said before, they're the Midas Design Pre's, they sound great, and this is gonna be great for like, a coffee shop gig or you know uh, something with you know just a couple of band members and maybe some keyboard stuff things of that nature it's going to be really hip for that now let's take it to the corporate side of the world if you're a corporate person you're doing corporate uh, audio visual and you just need something for you know to you know for the president or ceo to speak to everybody in the company you need a small pa set up for that you know this is perfect for that. It's a couple microphones in, and you can actually, you know, because the whole idea is it's super simple. You plug the mics in, you plug in some powered speakers, that's your setup. It's, it's that easy to be able to set up, okay? So on this one, it would be a little larger band setup, and then this one is a more full band. So back to this one, if you had like two or three keyboard players, let's say, and you have a couple of microphones going on, it's a singer-songwriter thing, something like that, or you're running a jam that has, you know, just a singer-songwriter thing, you don't anticipate big bands, you know, this is gonna be perfect for that. And inside of it are all of the really cool effects. So let's just kind of, I'll go through all the channels. Let me just talk about the I.O. first. And then I'll go through what features are on every channel because there's a boatload of great stuff in here. So it's really cool. So in addition to the inputs, you have two XLR outputs, like I said, to connect to powered speakers. And you have two aux outs that you can send to powered monitors. And also you have a headphone jack with its own volume control, which is super handy. If you, want, if you are the front of house person, you want to check what's going on. That's your headphone jack and your own volume. And each of the units actually has that same feature. So you always have a headphone jack capable when you want to check mixes. So that's the I.O., how to get in and out of the box. Now the antenna here, the USB port, the MIDI jacks, and over here the switching section is, <laughs> is some of the really cool stuff. So what ends up happening is you have three ways that you can connect the X-Air stuff onto the products, okay? One is to connect to a router. You can make a physical router, okay, and go get one and, and assign like a dual band five gigahertz router or something like that. And you can connect to that using the ethernet port, or you can use an existing network using the Wi-Fi client switch position, or you can directly connect to the XIRs from just going to the access point and connecting directly because there's actually a router built in. And so what I was talking about is why I have the three options, okay? One is you can actually connect through an ethernet port straight to a laptop if you wanted to, or you can go ahead and use this for a router. And the reason for that one is on a lot of gigs, sometimes you know the internal router is gonna be great, okay? It's gonna work fine. But we do a lot of trade shows like I was talking about, and sometimes with trade shows you have everybody in every booth on the whole show floor has their own network going on, and it's a lot of Wi-Fi interference. So sometimes with that you wanna go ahead and connect up to another router and the dual band router, and you're gonna get a, a stronger signal and it'll be great in that environment. Outside of that kind of application, the internal router, I'd give that a best bet right out of the gate because it works really well. And then the other position is to use the Wi-Fi client, which means to use an existing network. And the reason I was saying that that might be kind of difficult is a lot of venues don't want to give out the passwords to their networks, okay? And if you've toured it all, you've seen it happen. You go, hey, can I have the password to your network? And they're like, yeah, no, okay? So do you, if they do let you do it, you can, lat, you can latch onto their network and it's going to be great. But it's nice to have those other two options in case they don't. All of the options can be password protected so that you don't have somebody in the audience actually trying to mix your set for you as well. That would be bad. So uh, yeah, you wanna have those options, okay? So that kind of catches us up past the IO and we're now we're gonna talk about the MIDI ports, which is where we were. And the MIDI ports IO is on each of them. And you can indeed connect other controllers up to this via MIDI connections at this time, okay? I know that there was a lot of questions about whether the X-Touch can do it, uh, you know, via a connection for Ethernet or Ultranet, and that's still coming in the future. That's not here yet. So you can still use MIDI cables and connect X-Touch, X-Touch Compact to these, and you'll have some functionality going on there. And you can also trigger things like lights and other things like that as well, so it's kind of fun. Now the USB port is on all three, or on all four units. However, it's different on two of them, okay? So the USB port on the back of this unit is straight up, it's a, you know, it's just a regular go ahead and go USB port. And it's different on these two than it is on these two, okay? 
What it is is that the USB port on these two is just strictly for updates and for a two track in and out, okay? On the last one, the USB port on the XR18 and the X18, they will carry all 16 channels over to your laptop or to another device. And what's handy about that are 18 channels on the, XR, on the XR18. What's handy about that, of course, is recording your gig. You know, I mean, you, days of old, you had to carry an awful lot of gig into, a lot of gear into the gig with another engineer and a whole new setup just to get your show recorded. You know, not really cost effective and not a lot of space in a lot of venues for all of that setup. Now, you can connect just one USB cable. This is what I have going on here. And if you look over here on my laptop, I'm going to go and I have a logic session going on, right? So I have this session that's playing. You can see the meter levels there. This is directly being controlled with the Xair app, which is available at the App Store. And I'm controlling logic from there. And what's fun is I can control it from there. I can control it. You can see the signal level here. So I have a lot of options to me, available to me. That means I can record my whole show, right? I have a laptop at the gig. And if I have a large internal drive, that's fine, or I can go get an external terabyte drive, hit the red button at the beginning of the set, let it record the whole set, all right? At the end of the set, you hit stop. After the break, you start again. Now you have, you know, for some of the gigs where you're doing three or four sets a night or something like that, you have four sets of material that's all laid out. And it's going to work with Logic and Cubase and all the usual suspects, so it's going to work great. Um, so that's a nice thing for the USB feature for this and for the X-Air, okay? Again, on these two, you can see it's physically a different kind of USB connection. And what ends up happening is these two will not give you all the channels out. They will give you two mix only, okay, and for updates. And then on, on these two, you get all 18 channels. So it's super cool to have the USB capability. And it's bi-directional. And on top of that, you can choose the channels. Okay, so I can say, well, you know, I'm only using eight channels, but I have some playback tracks, especially if you're doing you know, plays. Plays, so many times they have feed music that comes in. There's source music coming in from the wings or something like that, you know, and they're queuing it up. You can have live mics for all the principals in the play, and you can go ahead and have music flowing in at the same time. And the live mics are coming off the stage, you know, wired or wireless. And then you have the USB can play back tracks from your computer as well. Super cool setup. So let's go ahead, that's kind of the I.O. section of it, how to get in and out. And on the bottom, like I said, these auxes out are the XLR outputs and they can be assigned to be pretty much any signal output you want to have. So typically, typical situation, these are going to be your monitor sends. And you would take those outputs, these are not powered outputs, these are passive outputs, and you can connect them to powered monitors and set up your mixes at will. And you know, you, from that point, it's like a regular monitor out section of a console. You put the monitors on stage, decides what you want in each box. And then the last thing that's separate than the other kids, these two have an Ultranet port. Now the Ultranet port is super hip because it allows you to use the other Behringer products for in-ears. Right? So I can actually take the Ultranet port and take it to a P16D, which is a distribution box, okay? Take the level there and then send it out to different P16Ms, which are the smaller in-ear boxes. And now I can dial in my whole mix, you know? I can sit there and go at the drum position or I'm a guitar player at the guitar position, you know, or at the bass position. You can have this mounted on a stand and you can literally have 16 channels coming from this straight down the box and not only can you get the levels, but you can change the pan of each track, you can change the EQ of each track, you know, and have an overall volume, a volume for each one, and you can store the positions. Because if you're a regular band in, the, in town and stuff like that, most touring stuff, you're paying the same 12 places every three months, right? So <laughs> you can actually have settings for those 12 places and go, this is kind of the starting point, the good starting point for this club or our rehearsal hall, something like that. So it's nice to have those settings. You can have them in one case, piece of tape on it says bass, guitar, keys, drums, vocals, backup vocals, one, two, three, whatever. And you hand them out at the gig and it's done. So being able to have that alternate is super cool to be able to set up the P16 system. And you don't need a P16D, or, you know, but you, you, can direct, you can use that as a distribution box to get to many more P16Ms. So the alternate port is super cool to be able to do that. Okay? So that's kind of the last feature set of the I.O. Okay? And like I said, they all have the headphone jack and stuff like that. Super cool. Let's get inside the box now from the outside of the box and talk about something, all the things that are on the channels, okay? So I'm gonna go to my laptop now and let's take a peek. 
All right, so I'm going over here. This is my handy little iPad for your questions when they come up. So, <laughs> so and we have none yet, but that's okay. All right, so over here on the software, this is the XAR software that is available at the App Store, okay? So you can download this and it controls everything inside it and it's available not only for the laptop, but also for the iPad, for the Droid, all these kinds of things, even for the phone, you know? So you're gonna have a great time being able to have capable access to the box and all the great things that are in it. So let's just go through a channel strip, okay? So as you'll see, you have on the left-hand side of the console over here, you have all your channel strip settings up at the top, okay? And then on the right-hand side, you have more like your master section. So let's just take a peek. Here's my mixer, and you can see I have a typical session thrown up here, and I have some tracks coming back with audio, and my master two mix over here is on the right-hand side, right? So I'm gonna go from the mixer, that's the whole screen, and then if I go to channel, now you can see the channel strip just for channel one. And look at all the great stuff that's in each channel. Now this is every channel. This is not assignable. This is not using up my effects yet for gates and things like that. This is actually just out of the box. So on every channel, you have a choice of whether you want it to be USB or analog coming in. And right now, since I have it tied to a session in Logic that I showed you earlier, the USB is coming from there through the box and then I'm controlling it here. So it's not making a loop of audio. It's just being controlled by the software. So I can choose whether I want it to be USB or not. I can choose whether I want to have phantom power for vocals. Phantom power is available on every channel. I can go ahead and change uh, polarity. If I'm having a phase issue or something like that, I can change the phase of one of the, uh, of the microphones and get that taken care of so that you don't have that really nasal kind of sound. So you can change the polarity with that. I can stereo link tracks. So if I have a keyboard player on the stage and he's got his whole rig is all dialed in and he's just giving me a left and right two mix off of his keyboard rig, I can have that in stereo, okay? And both will control, and both faders will go up in stereo, up and down when you, when you control them and access them, okay? This one is if I wanna insert an effect, okay? So I have my choices of the different effects that I wanna insert. And I, I've done another video that explains the difference between inserts and send and return. But an insert just means basically you're putting that effect right on that track, okay? And no, and no one else can use that effect anywhere else in the mixer. It's a reverb or it's a, something that's gonna, you know, a voice pitch box or something that's gonna be right on that track. So that's an insert. So over here underneath it is this is how I set up my gain. It's super simple. Here's my mic gain and here's my USB trim. And that's handy because if I have a track coming back that's kind of hot off of a computer or something like that, or differing levels maybe for house music playback, I can go ahead and adjust that trim here, which is really handy. And here's just my mic gain and I will see the level over here and also at the IO. And so that's nice, okay? Next block over is my noise gate. Okay, so I have this view right here, which is a channel strip. So it's almost like looking down at a console where you can see everything at once all lined up. So I'm gonna go show you across them and then we'll go into individual things because there's actually a page for each. For instance, this is the short version of the channel input. If I go ahead and I click here, Here's the long version of the exact same thing. And also you have a low cut filter so I can roll off low end, which is handy for live stuff and things like that, taking care of toms, rolling on the stage, things like that, okay? And then I go to the noise gate. Now back in the channel setting, it's here for quick access, okay? And I can set my threshold and I'll be able to see my gain reduction right away. I can see everything that's going on in the channel. Doesn't look like there's a lot of flexibility here until I actually go ahead and hit the gate page. Now you get to the good stuff. I can turn on and off the noise gate here. I have presets for kick, snare, acoustic, and vocal. You know, so it'll automatically, if I click one of these, you'll see it kind of go gate preset, acoustic. Yep, now you can see that change. And now I have basically a pretty good setup for an acoustic, okay? So right now, this is a kick channel, so I'm gonna go back and load the kick channel. And now that's a nice setup for this. And as you can see, I can set the range of when I want it to affect. I can choose different, uh, if I wanna use it as an expander, I can use the ratios here. Um, I can change my gain envelope of you know, how fast I want a gate to attack, how long do I want it to hold that gate open, and what's the release time of the gate. You know, so after that sound, how long do I want the channel to be open before it closes again, okay? And then sidechain filter is a really handy filter as well. And I don't know how many of you have used sidechain, but it's really kind of cool. Let's just say, for instance, I'm playing guitar and I wanna just play like a, a, a one five don't, da dum like that, but I want the guitar to be super tight, 
okay? And so, and I want it to really lock with the kick drum. So I want the beater to be just a bam, ba I can set a gate on the kick drum, but have it sidechain the guitar. So the only time you're gonna hear the guitar is when the kick hits, right? So the guitar can be a little bit more sloppy if you wanted to, but the envelope of the, the gate on the kick is what's gonna control it. So all of a sudden it's just bum, ba dum, ba dum, like that. So a side chaining feature to have, and it's usually in bigger mixers, and it's nice to have it in something just like these cool portable units. So it's nice to have that there, okay? So that's just the gate. And if I go back to the channel, you'll see that the next one is my EQ. I can turn it on and off from here, and I can go ahead and choose a low roll off frequency if I wanted to, if I wanted to have a low cut, you can see it changing there on the screen, okay, if I choose to do so. And again, I have more features. So it's a four band EQ, okay, I can choose per band what kind I want it to be, whether I want it to be a shelving EQ or a, a parametric EQ, whatever I want to do with it, okay. And I can choose per band how I want to control what I want to have, what frequency, how much Q do I want it, how much bandwidth do I want it to affect, things of that nature. So I have the four bands here and I can save them also as presets. So if I have a favorite vocalist EQ or if I have a favorite kick drum EQ or something like that, I can store those. And the way you just do it is you go over to save and I click on this and it'll be able to ask me a location where do I want to save it. And if I want to load it later, I go to the load window, same thing happens. So it's really cool. So now here's my EQ section. I can turn it on and off. I can reset an EQ so that it's all flat and just go, let's start back over from the beginning. That EQ wasn't working, let's start again. And then you can go ahead and roll through your EQ settings. So this is super handy you know, for every channel to have that kind of capable four band parametric. It's really super nice to have. It's gonna be very effective for you on the gig. Okay, and also if you're using these boxes as a front end, especially the XR18 and the X18, if you're using them as a front end for a session, these EQs are super strong. You can use these to tweak for, you know, getting great sounds tracked, okay? So that's really nice. Next up on the list is the compressor, okay? And compressor, as you may or may not know, is gonna keep the signal really kind of even. You have to use compressors with a lot of sensitivity though, because if you use them on things too much, it's gonna sound like you literally put a pillow over it, whether it's a kick drum or a vocal, too much compression is bad. And I don't know how it got taught that compression is, overusing compression is good because it's not. So here's a compression page where you can really set a compressor nicely. So you, again, we have some presets for you over here. This is where you can set your threshold and your gain, deciding how much you wanna have. And you have different knees, like you know, for how the knee is gonna be for the amount of threshold and how quickly it's gonna affect or not. And then I still can set up my ratio of my compression and the ratio is, for every dB, how many dB am I compressing it? Okay, the ratio, it's like a three to one ratio is cool for vocals to start with, things like that. You wanna get them four to five to one ratio, it gets a little messy, um, but it depends on the vocalist, it depends on the source, and it depends on the environment. So you can do that here. You can decide the mix also of the original source against what's being compressed, and if you need to give it some output gain on the way out, then you have this is available here, okay? Now I have a gain envelope where I can set it for auto, or I can say, okay, again, attack, hold, and release. It's the same on a gate as it is a compressor, you know? So it's the, uh, the attack is how fast you want it to respond to a signal. The hold is how long do you want that to be open. And then the release is how long do you want after that sound, do you want this you know, uh, compressor to still be active? And so those things are the same three features on a gate and as on a compressor, okay? And then also, again, there's a side chain filter which is nice because you can, instead of doing that same thing with the kick drum for a gate to open and close, you can choose it to compress, okay? So side chaining is very cool to have, okay? That's nice there. Now, so in the strip, you've seen me talk about, you know, the input gain and then talking about, you know, the setting up the, the uh, channels for compression and gate and EQ on every channel, right? So that gets your basic sound of what's happening, okay? Next, we wanna talk about effects and things of that nature. So let's get in and talk about those. And that is your sends. Now before I talked about an insert versus a send and return effect, okay? And like I said, an insert is, you know, something that is put in the chain. If I had two pieces of white rope and I put a piece of red, like, you know, cut the white rope and put a piece of red rope, that's an insert. You know, you know it's now white, red, white. It's there, it can't be used anywhere else. That's an insert. A send and return is when you can send a bunch of individual signals out and then have them all return to the same place. They're all going to the same place. 
And if you've seen my other videos, you know my analogy, but it's just like living on a street and you have different kids in houses on the street, okay? And what are you going to do? You're going to send them to school. And how are you going to do it? You're going to send them on a bus, right? And it's a lot of individual signals all going to the same place. They're all going to the same school, okay? It's the exact mentality. If you look at the computer screen here, you'll see that I have buses, six buses. And what I can do is if I had five backup vocals, five individual signals, I can send them all to the same reverb using a bus, okay? So bus three might be my reverb bus or it might be my you know, backup vocals bus, whatever. But I can send them all to the same place or as a bus for monitors, or I can send them all to the same effects if I wanted to. But that's the difference between an insert and send and return. So send and return here, and there's what's nice on the screen as you can see, if I'm sending a signal to a bus, not only can I send it to the bus, but I can choose where do I want to pull that signal from. And I may like just seem, well, you want to pull the whole signal. Well, not all the time. If I want to have a signal where it's just like, I'm going to send, one of these buses is going to go to an external processor, okay? And I want it so that every time I move my hand up on the fader, it doesn't affect what's going out. Okay, then I want to take the signal pre-fader. I want to take it before the fader, send it out to my external effect, and then bring it back in. Okay, so I don't want that fader in play. So as you can see up here, I can take the signal straight from the input. I can take it before the EQ. I can take it after the EQ, pre-post, pre-fader, post-fader, or I can make it a subgroup. And as you can see, if I have anything besides subgroup, I have a fader, an amount, a level that I want to actually send out. So I can take any of these signals and send them out to buses. So therefore, on the right-hand side over here, you see these same bus numbers, and I can assign these, let's just say bus one is my monitor mix, okay, for, for the drums. So I can say, okay, this is how much of these different signals I want going to that bus, okay? And I can send, you know, a little of the toms up to that, you know, and this is actually the mix that would go out to bus number one for the monitor's wedge, or out of the alternate port, I, that would be in that bus also to be able to send out and go to the, into the in-ears, okay? So I can do this for every channel, and I can do it for every bus. You can see some bus presets are there, okay? So I have them, and what's fun is that if you notice, they're color-coded, which is super handy and super easy to see, and I can also name the buses. So while on the screen it says bus one, two, three, four, five, six over here, if you notice right over here, I've named it, okay? So bus one is for drums, bus two is guitar, bus three is bass, bus four is vocals, bus five is the recording feed, and bus six is for subs. So this is a cool setup, you know, to, ha to have that capability of being able to not have to go to every channel and look at every individual channel to see what that bus level is. I can just come down here and see them all at a glance. All right, so I can do that. And I can also do this for my effects feeds as well, for effects one, two, three, and four. So this is kind of your master section for being able to control the buses and your effects. And so that takes care of this sends page, okay, and your main page. The main page is super simple. It's basically the main fader, and it decides where do I want this signal in the panning world? Do I want it more to the left, more to the right, things like that? Do I even want to send it? over to the mixer, sometimes you may have a signal coming in that's just feeding other things, and you don't want it to come out of the two mix. You know, maybe it's a, a, you're having music coming in, or click track, or something like that, for the drummer's ear only, or something like that, and you go, I really don't want the click track going out to the audience, okay? I can go ahead and mute that here without muting the channel. I can just keep it from going to the left and right bus. So, because if I mute it at the channel, well, the problem there is gonna be I mute it from everything. So, <laughs> I may just wanna take it out of the bus, so I can do that there. Over here are my group assignments, DCA groups and mute groups. DCA groups are where you can actually digital control amplifiers, DCAs, and you can have many faders assigned to them and then decide with one fader, with one DCA, to control all of them. Like for instance, it would be a little bit of a drag sometimes to bring up a whole drum set, but I can go ahead and have my DCA group and raise up all the drums or down as a DCA and at one time so that I'm not doing individual drums. If I go overall, I need to bring the drums up or down. I can assign them all to one DCA and be able to do that super easy. Okay, and then the mute groups are cool as well because I can mute different groups of people. So for instance, on that same argument of being able to have a drum 
mute group where I just want to mute the drums, I can go ahead and click on these here, which is these are my four mute groups. And if I have them assigned there, just like this. Now, if I do mute group one, then I can go ahead and have those mute groups working. So I go over here, now you see all the drums are muted, okay, with mute group one. Okay, here's mute group two, there's a couple more things. So I can mute everything at once, which can be handy, especially for effects. You know, if you have a lot of reverb and delay and things like that on the lead vocal, the last thing you want is after the song's over, this big wonderful song, is for them to talk to the audience and all those effects are still on. You know, then it's kind of like, hello everybody, hello everybody, hello. Yeah, it doesn't really work, right? So what you want to be able to do is mute those effects. So you can have your effects set to a mute group, and now at the end of every song, you just hit the mute group for those effects. Now the audience only hears the vocalist talking in a normal voice, and the world is a good place, okay? That's where these get controlled. And then there's a completely separate feature that I want to talk about is auto mix. An auto mix is a Dugan style auto mix, and what's hip about it is that, let's just say, because nowadays, like I was talking about in another video, there's the after show interviews, there's, you know, things that are going to Twitter feed things like that, so there's a lot of stuff after the show or before the show. There's interviews and things like that for radio, as well as just to a live audience, just like we're doing right here, right now. So if I was on this stage and I had, was using the XR18 and I had two panels of people and six on each side, right? And I'm going to have a, a conversation with them about the music industry and music licensing or something really chewy like that, you know, it'd be fun. So <laughs> yeah, I have six on a side. And so then I have all these open microphones. I have 12 open microphones, right? I can assign six of them right here to be on Automix X and six of them to be on Automix Y. So one panel is going to be on one group and one panel is going to be on the other, okay? So I can go ahead and choose which ones I want to have here. This guy is going to be X, and this is going to be X, and this one's going to be X. And you can see automatically there's little compressors that are built in. And I can go to the Y channel and I can say, okay, this person's going to be a Y, this person's going to be a Y. Oh, still saying the X, sorry. Mm. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one here. So then now I can assign the other people to the Y. So then what ends up happening then is all the people, these are my X group right here, six people on it. If somebody starts talking, it automatically brings down the volumes of the other five people, okay? So it's auto gain structuring for you, which is super handy because six microphones, open microphones at a good level for people to speak at is like kind of asking for trouble, okay? So if you have this set up like this, then only the person talking is gonna come through and the other ones are gonna be more muted. Somebody else starts talking, that way. And then the same on the other side, on the Y side, for the other group of people, same thing happens. So now you have a great interview and you don't have to worry about so much audio problems. And it's a great, super great feature to have as an auto mix within the unit, okay? So that's the auto mix section. So let's go over to the master section here. Let me check in real quick. Any questions? How does the gate computer, uh, the gate compressor EQ work from Bass Face? What's up, Bass Face? How you doing? Um, how you want me to show how they work? Okay, well, let's just take a peek into that. I've got a kick drum coming back here. Okay, so let me mute these kids. So on this channel for the bass, here's my noise gate. You can see that the gain reduction over here is not really happening right now. If I bring up the threshold, this is going to this is going to bring you can see where the gain reduction is complete. It's shut off that moment, you know. So if I have the noise gate going and I go ahead and do this, and basically what I'm showing you, the noise gate really is just like a gate. So imagine you and I, you know, base face on either side of a of a fence with a gate, right? And you go ahead and I say you go you want to come through the gate. And I go, "Sure." But you've got to push so hard for me to let you through. That's the threshold. At what point of pressure are you pushing that it's gonna actually open the gate and let you through? Okay, that's the threshold, okay? So the other features that are in the gate, if we go to up here, okay, and you see the attack, the hold, and release times. So once you've, I've said, okay, if you push this much, you can kind of come through and, and you start pushing. The next three features, the attack is how fast do I wanna let you go? As soon as you start coming to the gate, do I want to yank it open and let you through? Or am I going to go, yeah, you got to kind of come in slowly. I had a lot of people behind me here. I can't just have you storming through. That's the attack time. It's how fast the gate is going to open. All right? So 
the hold time is how long is it going to take you to get through the gate and what time is that? So how long do I hold that gate open and go, yeah, man, come on in, right? So then I do that. And then as soon as you come on through, that's the third thing is the release time is how long is it going to take for that gate to close behind you? Because you may want to keep it open, you know, a nice slow close, you know, like that with like an air compressed door or something like that. Or I may just go, hey, as soon as you come through, I'm closing the gate again. I'm letting you in, but nobody else is coming in, okay? Until the next person pushes at the right pressure to open that gate again. So it's very much like that, okay? So to show it kind of is just like, this is just the control of it. And that's, you know, for what we're doing today, like I said, is more overview. Uh, we can do more stuff later when I'll get more specific on each of these features in future videos. But for the overview section, you're setting that threshold of when you can come through the gate, okay, and how much I'm going to go ahead and, and require you to push. And then the other things are like, you know, the gate time, the release time, and things like that, okay? So this is what's fun about a noise gate. The next one you want to know is compressor, okay? So like I said, a compressor is working here. It's the exact same principle, really. It's the threshold. As you can see, the controls are almost identical. So the threshold is sitting here, and I decide again. You can see as I pull it down, I'm getting more gain reduction. And the threshold is like, man, is, when you're coming into this level, I'm going to start compressing you, okay? And then the same feature sets are here as far as attack, hold, and end of release. How soon do I want to... And where this comes into play, really more so than noise gate, with a compressor, you may want to compress a vocal to keep it smooth, okay? But if you do, it also works the same with gate is if you have set a really quick release time, you'll hear pumping in the mix. Because if I said, if, you know, if I'm doing, Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, right? And just, you know, and if I have that gate shut off after lamb and that compressor uncompress after lamb and then whose fleece was running, is going to clamp back down, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it pump. So sometimes you want that release time to last from Mary had a little lamb gate still open, whose fleece was white as snow, and then it'll kind of stay more open like that. Sometimes if you're doing like a marching drum though, and you want it super tight, you want that release time super short, so it's like it's just like a machine gun. Those, those snare press rolls and things like that are gonna be really sharp and accurate. So it depends on the source, what you're doing, and what effect you wanna have, you know? So on the compressor, like I said, you don't wanna smother it really badly. You just wanna kind of smooth it out a little bit. You know, and it also a, a great deal of compression, to be honest, is how much mic technique the person has, especially for vocals. You know, other things, guitars, something like that. You can kind of have pedals for that. But a, a vocalist is like serious. They're dialed in and they have to have good mic technique. And for those of you that are vocalists or engineers, mic technique is where you'll see, you know, big vocalists, they all have a pose, right? You know, they'll be like this, or they're kind of like this, or whatever on stage. And what they're doing is they're moving that microphone back and forth from their mouth so that the engineer gets an even level all the time. And it's great. So a perfect exercise for that is you hook a microphone up to an XR18, and you sing into it, and you sing the soft part of the first verse, and then you sing the loud part of the third chorus. You know, it's going to get loud. But if you can keep that meter at zero the whole time between all those changes, you're dialed in. Because you'll see the big stars, they start in like this when you want to be sultry. And when you want to belt, you move that microphone back and you project your voice more. Okay? And what I always say is treat the microphone like somebody you care about's ear. Right? You wouldn't get up here into somebody's ear and scream. And conversely, you wouldn't have them 10 or 15 feet away and whisper. You know, you want to use the right amount of voice for that. You can use that in conjunction with a compressor to really keep it nice and smooth. Okay, so that's kind of that. And then the EQ, and there's a whole discussion on EQ that's kind of fun, um, but it depends on what you're doing with the mix. Whether you're EQing an instrument or whether you're EQing a whole set of backup vocals or you're doing your final mix, different kind of rules apply. But basically, you can kind of work out different EQs based on what it is you want, and you'll find out different frequencies. It's like 500 for a kick and a snare is a real important frequency. Um, 1.2K is right about in here. That's like 1.2K, that really nasally thing, and if you pull that out, all of a sudden your voice is going to warm up. Sibilance is, depending on male or female vocal, is going to be around maybe like 4K, and that's that sound between it getting really muffled like this and all of a sudden being very clear. That's the edge of sibilance is in there. So you'll start to learn some of these frequencies and how you want to use them effectively in your mix, and you'll find the center band frequencies. And there's another cool thing with frequencies also is that 7 plus 3 equals 10, but so is 13 minus 3, okay? And by that I mean 
you can use subtractive EQ. A lot of people want to use additive uh, EQ and you go, oh, let me just turn up the bass a little here and let me turn up the mids a little here and let me turn up the highs, I got to get that edge on them. And really, if you had just pulled out some mids, you would have got that effect. Okay, so you can do subtractive EQ as well. Okay, so it's a whole set of tools that you can work with and there's no set rule for it. There really isn't. You can do whatever you want, you know, and the answer is, if it sounds right, you did it right. <laughs> so <laughs> work, with, work with getting that going on. And let me see if there's what's, uh, some other questions here because that was actually kind of loaded. You got three effects in once. So let's uh, see what else we got here. Uh, okay. Cool. Let's take a peek. Oh, okay. Um, John was talking about uh, John, uh, sorry, John 68's uh, was talking about a talkback channel. If I wanted to talk back a channel or something like that, and I wanted to go ahead and set it up for that, I can do that easily, okay? What I want to do is be able to, depending on how I want to do a talkback channel, are you talking a talkback channel to Aroma Studio musicians or a talkback channel just from front of house to the stage? It's gonna work the same way. You would dedicate a channel, let's just say Vox One over here, and I would say, okay, I wanna have this on Ascend, and I wanna send that talkback channel to one of my auxes. So, for instance, if this was bus six, let's just say, was my wedge going out over to, uh, the, to the stage, going to the monitors, okay? And I'd have that talkback mic would be up here, and I can go ahead and send it to all the wedges at once. Or I can choose which wedge I want to have it to by kind of going, okay, I got to talk to the drummer. So now I'm going to go ahead and have that. Let's see, let me pull a mono channel actually. So let's just say this, uh, this one guitar. Let's just say that that was my talkback mic, okay? So now I can send it to just the drums and talk back to the drums. Now this mic is with me at front of house, okay? So I can go ahead and use that, but it's only coming out in the monitor wedge. So it's a normal channel, you would go into the input section here and you would have it set for analog instead of USB because I'm playing back tracks on the other one. And I would set that up and I would just send it to one of my aux outs and have that go you know, to whatever aux out is connected to the people I want to talk to on stage, whether it's the lead vocalist wedge or the bass wedge or something like that. So that's how a talkback mic is going to work, okay? And let's see. <laughs> okay. Somebody said outside a uh, uh, G Massa says so. Other than the usual fat channel parameters, uh, which a lot of digital mixers have, why would I want to purchase this? And the cool thing is, is that you really have an extensive extensive effects library in addition to the fat channel and all those things. So by that, I mean, check it out. And I haven't even gotten to the effects yet. But to answer your question, yes, a lot of mixers have compressors, gates, and things like that on every channel. No, a lot of mixers, especially in this size package, are going to have all those effects and everything like that in this size package for stereo effects. You know, so let's just take a look at the effects page and I'll just run you through the list. So here's the, the effects list, okay? Just kind of take a peek at this library of effects that I can go through. You know, it's delays and choruses and EQs and just look at a scroll on, you know. I've got X-Tech EQs, I've got compressors, different kinds of compressors if I want to use something with a different little flavor than what is stock on the channel. So I have stereo enhancers, exciters, guitar amp processors, you know, so all of that is available and that's not something you see in every mixer, especially four stereo pairs of them and a box at this price point. So the cool thing for me about it, which makes it so hip on this series, I just take it in, put it by the drums, plug in the mics, put it in two powered speakers, and I'm done. I'm not schlepping a ton of stuff around, and I have everything I need in the box, no outboard gear, and the footprint of this is this. The footprint isn't a console on a desk, it's not somewhere in front of the house, I'm not running any copper wires, I'm just dialed in with one, you know, with a remote control. And also everybody else can control their own mix as well. That's why, okay? Because it works really well and has a ton of feature sets in it and it's so portable and it's so easy to get with. So that's kind of what I think some of those reasons are, okay? And being able to use it as a front end for 
a digital recording rig and be able to record your own rigs and stuff with no other interface necessary. For that size footprint and this in the front of house, it's done. <laughs> so um, let's see, we have another one. Uh, let's see. How fast of a processor do you have to have for the XR18 live recording? It's going to be any, I would probably say for this, it's just going to be audio coming in on a USB port. So it's your bus speed is going to be, you know, important that's in the, in the computer. But I would, for the testing that we've done, which has been on some older computers, I will say. So I would say that anything that was made within the last 10 years should be fine you know, as a laptop or something like that. You get going a little bit farther back, but we've used it with some pretty, for some pretty dated computers just for that kind of testing, and they've all held up. So, uh, you know, I don't want to say that this process, I'm not going to say a frequency, uh, you know, a speed, and then go, oh, well, yeah, you know. But I will say, in general, anything made in the last 10 years is going to work great. So, because it's just seeing it as that. So if it has trouble bringing in 16 channels of audio, then maybe you want to talk about it at that point. But I, there's not a minimum speed. There's no spec for a minimum speed for this, any of these units. So there's not, yeah, there's not a preferred computer or computer, uh, uh, preferred speed or anything like that. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, piano Forte, we kind of answered it earlier in the chat. Uh, what are the differences between the X18 and the XR18? And the biggest answer is on 17 and 18 for these two, it's RCA versus quarter inch. Other than that, functionally the same, there's still the XLR inputs, and the other thing is different is on the aux outs, these are XLR, and on the back of this one, they're balanced quarter inch, okay? So those are the two biggest differences, but all the processing is the same, all of the mic pre's are the same, everything like that, everything under the hood is the same. It's just a way to have a nice setting area out front instead of having the box on the stage. This is cool, I'm digging some of these questions, okay? Recording onto a thumb drive. That's not going to be... It's on the X32 and things like that, but actually to record to a two mix on these, you just use the thumb drive right out of here, and you're going to get a stereo mix, but you're not going to get all the individual channels. Okay, so if you're looking to use like a thumb drive on these two, then yeah, you can go ahead and get a two mix out of them. On the other ones, you'll see it's a different USB port and it's made more for doing multi-track outputs. Okay, so if you're looking for multi-track recording, I would entertain the idea for the XR18 or the X18. If you're cool with the two mix, then I would go ahead and use one of the other units. That's not to say that if you didn't have an interface that you couldn't take these aux outs and get four outputs or something like that. But as far as thumb drives are going, that's what's happening with that end of town. Okay, uh, let's see. Right, okay, always, always, it's like, when's the new stuff coming out? Okay, <laughs> we get questions about when's the new stuff coming out, because it's a valid question. You know, everybody wants to know when the new updated thing is going to come on. To be honest with you, I don't have any new release news for you on any of the platforms, on Droid or on iPad or anything like that. I do know that our engineers are always working really hard on solutionizing things that can be better, coming up with things that aren't there now that are gonna be better and more implementation. So be sure to just check your social media, you know, like here on, you know, these open mic things here on uh, YouTube, on our Facebook pages, and on the website itself at, face, at uh, Behringer.com, okay, in the download section. Check there often, you know, because that's where they're gonna be at if there are any new updates, okay? But on the books right now, I'm not, I have no privy into any new releases at, at this time, okay? All right, let's see. Let's see, okay, cool. All right, cool. So are there any last questions that are going on? I do want to talk about a couple of things in the routing section, okay? So if you got any last couple of questions, we only got a few minutes left. You know, I've been having a blast with this, hanging with y'all. But uh, let me touch on a couple of things while you're getting your last questions in, and I will check them out, and we'll talk about those things. So let's get back over here for right now, and just get back to the last couple of features. The effects page, this is the effects page that I was talking about, and Again, you can choose to insert the effect or you can have it as a send and return, okay? So that's my choices here and I can insert effects on any channel I want to, okay? 
And then that's the same for all four stereo effects, which is nice to have, you know, and I can do tap tempo for my delays and things like that. It's super hip. Okay, here's my metering page. If you're gonna have a mixer, you gotta see where the levels are, right? So this is the session I have running in Logic, and here's my meters page, so I can go ahead and have this. If I had analog inputs going on, I would see them here. I'm seeing USB, because I'm bringing it right from Logic, okay? So here's my bus outputs that I assign, show and send to monitor wedges, things of that nature, and P16 outs if I wanted to send out of the Ethernet port, or alternate port, sorry. So over here is the control section, and I can do setups, okay? So basically, this is how I'm gonna connect. Right now I'm connected to our network and I'm sharing the network with this, okay? So I'm dialed in that way and this is how I'm connecting to it. The important is having the right firmware version. You wanna check this against what's this on the website and the version of the app itself, the Xair app at the App Store, okay? Now this is access point. This is the, you know, like I was talking about, you can have it password protected. I can connect to networks. I have an audio MIDI page, which is, you know, what sample rate do I want to go at? I can go at 44, 1, or 48. I can choose whether I want to be able to link things, you know, within a channel. Do I want to link the EQs, things like that. My MIDI config, and whether I want the USB interface to be 18 channels or two channels. I can also have this as a two mix. Not possible on the XR12 and XR16. They only have the choice of just a two mix out. But for the XR18 and the X18, you can have this choice, okay? What do I want to monitor when I look at my monitor settings? You know, if I want to have it go faster or slower and some preferences here for my fader moves. I can make them fine or not and all the typical preferences that you want to have in a mixer, okay? And what windows you want to have on top and of course being able to initialize it is also nice, okay? So if you want to start from scratch on a mix, okay? The I.O. page, this is really cool and we're just going to dive right on through this. This is my input, and you can see there's a matrix here, okay? And this is the matrix of analog input to a channel that's on the mixer. It's super simple to be able to change and move things around. It's not, you know, it's, that's the whole point of these units is that it's super simple. So I, I have my inputs. I have my USB returns, like I have them coming back from the computer now. So if I wanted to bring them back to different channels and I wanted to have it, I could do so just by a saying here, like if I had, Channel 2 on music, I needed to come in as a channel 12. Okay, well, here's channel 2 as I wanted to come into music and I want it to be channel, or from here to go to the USB input, that's 2 going to 12. And then on the other side of it, I can have my USB returns and I could come back the opposite way if I wanted to do it like I was just talking about. So that's there. My USB sends, if I wanted to have sends going on, and again, down here, I can choose different points through 18. If I wanted to have a USB plug-in, I wanted to kind of do something like that, I can go ahead and set that up. And then the alternate, this is the port down here that I can go to the P16s. And standard, just like you can see, all 16 channels are going right to the P16Ms that would be connected to that uh, port. And again, per you know setup, I can choose where I want to tap it from, okay? My aux outs, same thing. You're getting the idea that the matrix is super simple, easy to get to, and you can store all these settings if you want to. Here it is, your I.O. patching presets is in the upper right-hand corner. So all these things I can just dial in. It's not like I have to do this every show. I can set it up offline before the show and set it up and then get to the show and plug stuff in. It's going to work fine. Okay, so that's your, your uh, I.O. This resize, you can resize the screen for the, uh, the type of screen that you have and it'll automatically expand or, you know, the, with the width or height, you can adjust things there, okay? And like I was talking about before, I'm gonna get to the utility in a second. I'm saving it there for, for last. And so if I wanna save presets or load presets, I can do that here. I can copy settings of different EQs from one area to another. I can copy and save it and paste it to somewhere else. So that's really kind of cool. I can also take snapshots of what's going on in the mixer just by hitting the snapshot button. And I can save those and I can load those back in. So there's a lot of ways to make it even easier to use by being able to have these functions like copy and paste and snapshots and the great library that you have in there which is another thing that you don't have on a lot of digital mixers because they don't have that library that's built in. You can save a couple presets, but this is really extensive because I can save a whole channel or just a part of a channel. If I like an EQ for a person, I can save just that EQ and not the rest of the channel. So being able to save different parts of it is really, really nice. So the last thing I want to get to is this utility. Super nice to be able to have floating windows. 
Okay, so if I wanted to see my real-time analyzer, I can go ahead and have that pop up as a window on top, which is nice when you're doing front of house and you want to see what's really going on in your mix. I can also see my buses and just have them right here floating, you know, and I can see like, so when I'm doing my monitor mixes, here's my monitor masters. Okay, so if I'm setting up my monitor mixes and I'm doing individual stuff on the buses over here, here's my masters, okay, and my master two mix for front of house. And it's just so nice to have on a floating window, especially when you want to have detail on a channel here, you know, and be able to go to my, uh, my uh, buses at the same time and just kind of go, okay, I'm adjusting something, but now I want to adjust the bus as well because I, I don't need it so loud because I've EQ'd it differently, okay? So that's super nice to have. And that's kind of the overall there. The auto mix here that we already talked about. Uh, I can have compressors on the two mix on the way out to protect speakers potentially and things like that. My DCA groups, I can clear solos if I solo something, and all the usual suspects are here for solo and, you know, and mute and things like that. So here's my effects masters, my mute groups we already talked about, muting the two mix out of the master fader, my master fader here. So this software is for all the units. So all the capabilities you're seeing here, except for the USB outputs and the different outputs, are all available on all the units. So it's super cool to be able to do this. So let's see if there's any more quick questions. Um, Oh yeah, okay. Oh cool, the turbo sound, you wanna, uh, uh, John68 wants to hear more about turbo sound by amp through the alternate. You can use the alternate to, to feed turbo sound IQ speakers. So you can use just like doing PI EQs and things like that. So you can assign the different types of outputs. And yeah, we're gonna get more specific into that a little bit later in another video, but we're not really gonna tap into that now, but you actually can assign it and you'd be able to use it with those turbo sounds. It's gonna work great because it's a family of products, okay? So don't forget, that tomorrow we're gonna to do an overview on X-Touch and X-Touch Compact and X-Touch Mini. A lot of people have been waiting for them to come out. They're out and they're cool. So we're gonna talk about those tomorrow. And I'm gonna talk about them with different platforms. Okay, so we're gonna talk about it with Logic and with Cubase and with uh, uh, Traction, which is a software program you can get free when you register your product, you know? So that's a cool way to get into the, the digital recording world. And uh, these mixers, these controllers, they work great both in Huey mode and Mackie control mode, and we'll get into depth about that. So be sure to tune in with us tomorrow. I'm hoping that you guys and gals got some questions answered uh, on these products. Like I said, we didn't go deep, but what we are gonna do is, this is a series. We're gonna do a lot of these. So at one point we'll say, this is how we get in down and dirty with a channel and we'll set up a microphone and talk, you know, specifically just about one channel strip, you know, or we'll talk about another one about just straight up effects. So if you didn't get all your questions answered on this, th the answers are coming. You know, so if you want to put in questions and go, we really want to hear about this or that or the other thing, I'll make it a topic. <laughs> we'll have some fun and get the, you know, get the knowledge out. That's all good. But thank you for tuning in today. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be back tomorrow with the other class on the X-Touches. And uh, keep supporting live music and keep supporting what we're doing here. And we love supporting you with all of your endeavors in the music world. So this is Phil Gates for Behringer. Have a great time with the rest of your day and or evening. Thanks a lot. Be good.